Okay, so uh, just a quick video looking at quantitative sensory assessment. So we do have a body of evidence that says that with more central changes, you will have uh, a alteration in the somatosensory feedback that those uh, individuals with pain have. Uh, so one of the things that comes out in the research that is clinically applicable is two-point discrimination. This is where you have a caliper like this one, where you will slide that caliper further and further away, asking the person if they feel one point or two, one point or two, one point or two, and you continue to move through that process until they tell you that they have two points. Now, the progression that I will use is based off the research where if it's a larger area, such as the low back, you'll move by full centimeter increments and then once you get to the point where they say two, you'll move back by half centimeter increments. Uh, that way you can kind of uh, zero in. So with smaller areas, such as the elbow, uh, in the leg, something like that, uh, I'll use a different methodology where I move by half centimeters. And once I get two points, I'll come out by a full centimeter and then work backwards to see if I zero in at roughly the same point. Uh, so that is the way you would use two-point discrimination uh, in the clinic. I also use this device, which is a uh, firmness assessor, uh, and it is uh, using the kilograms per centimeter squared uh, pressure assessment, which is found in the research, or at least you can translate it, that into Newtons. But uh, what it has is uh, two adjustments or two different uh, adapters that will screw onto the base here and then from there you start to press into the person until they say that that pressure has changed into a pain sensation so we're looking at threshold uh, not the maximum uh, tolerance so uh, with the smaller um, adapter you have a scale that goes from basically zero up to 24 kilograms per centimeter squared. If you use the larger adapter, it goes to 12 centimeters squared. So what I will do with uh, both of these is I will do the affected side and I'll compare to the non-affected side. Uh, not so much with the two point, but with the pressure, what I'll then do is move to a distant site looking for that widespread uh, threshold difference so say that I have a problem in the shoulder, I'll do the pressure assessment there, and then I'll look somewhere distally in the hand, provided it is a, um, it's not already referring into that area. In the research, they'll also do another distal site, such as the anterior tibialis. I don't go that far uh, in the clinic, uh, not because I have a good reason not to, but I, mostly because I don't have a, a good reason to tell the patient I'm going to go to the ankle when there are other things that seem to be more clinically relevant to do that day. Uh, so not right or wrong, it's just the way I approach it at this stands, uh, or at this uh, point in my practice. Now, what I have done for both of these is get them off eBay. This one was like 20 bucks, this one was like 80 bucks. So I'll be honest with you, I've been using these two for about two, three months now. I've used them on three different patients. Uh, one has gotten uh, progressively better. The other one uh, I think needs a larger psychological treatment. So I've referred that person out at this stage of the game. Uh, but within session, I've gotten changes in the positive for both of these. Across sessions, the two individuals who are progressing, uh, it has also changed. And we do see that in the literature that you can see changes. What we don't have yet is the population norm. So using this diagnostically uh, really isn't there yet, but you can look for changes across the um, time frame. Interestingly enough, one of my patients uh, who was doing very well ended up needing to undergo uh, testing. She's a, a college student, so she was going into some pretty hard testing for her uh, PhD. And leading up to her test, we reversed on this um, on the pressure pain uh, measurement, not so much on the two point, but on the pressure pain measurement, which I thought was interesting since you would expect there to be a, a decrease in that threshold given the stress component of her uh, overall um, human experience, more or less the pain experience. So I hope that gives you an idea of what I'm doing with the quantitative sensory assessment in the clinic. Uh, the literature needs to fully build up for 
uh, this before. I think it will be widespread usage, but I uh, tend to be an early adopter, so I am using it at present. And we'll see, we'll see where it is in six months, uh, year, if I'm still using it or not. So, all right, I hope that helps clarify how I use that. Uh, please feel free to shoot any questions uh, in this forum still.